Okay, this video is about the application of the shooting method to solve a differential equation that is a second order differential equation with two boundary conditions of course one of the boundary conditions is specified value of the dependent variable at one boundary and the specified value at the other boundary. Here I'll use the example that we did in, I think it was lab three, um, <coughs> for steady state heat transfer in a wall. The governing equation is given here as a second derivative of t with respect to x and that's equal to minus of the heat source divided by the thermal conductivity of the material. The actual physical problem that we're looking at here is of interest to bioproducts and uh, ecological engineering students. Um, so rather than just using a uh, differential equation that doesn't relate to anything might be less interesting. Uh, so this is uh, relevant to the kind of applications maybe that you would make. But anyway, for uh, this differential equation, we have two boundary conditions that are required in one of the uh, example applications that you did in lab five you solved the second order equation by reducing it to two first order equations and you had two boundary conditions one of the boundary conditions was the value of the dependent variable at x at uh, zero and the other one was the derivative of the dependent variable at zero. That is, in this case, that would be dt dx at x is equal to zero. The difference here is that now we have the temperature specified or the dependent variable specified at zero and the dependent variable is specified at the other end of the domain, which is of length L. So you might say at x is equal to L, we're specifying the temperature. At x is equal to zero, we're specifying the temperature. Rather than specifying the derivative of the temperature at x is equal to zero as the second boundary condition. So that would be the other kind of condition that we could have. T of x equal to zero, equal to 100 degrees, as shown here. And then the other condition would be dt dx equal to some number at x is equal to zero. That's an entirely different type of problem. I'll just say dt dx is equal to, let's say, five or something like that, just as an example. All right, so in a previous lab we showed you how you could uh, divide up this, you know, discretize this equation into the form of a bunch of, of algebraic equations and we could solve that in matrix form. But now what we're going to do is to show you how we can use the ODE 45 to solve a set of ordinary differential equations that are derived from this second order equation. So. We take the second order equation and we set y equal to dt dx. And as a result of that, we can take the second order equation we had above and we get two first order equations. Equation one, which is dy dx is equal to minus q over k. That's effectively a second order derivative of temperature with respect to x. And the other equation is that y is equal to dt dx. So this looks just like the uh, example that you did for um, lab five, where you took the differential equation and you reduced it, first, the second order differential equation reduced it to first order, uh, two first order equations. The difference here is in this case, I'm actually applying it to a real physical problem that uh, is realistic. <clears throat> so equation two is subject to condition that uh, T of zero is equal to 100 degrees, that is temperature at 
t is equal to zero, or x is equal to zero is 100 degrees. And equation one is subject to the other condition, which is that at uh, um, x is equal to zero, y is equal to a. Now remember a. Now remember a. Sorry. Remember y is the derivative of t with respect to x. That is the first derivative of the dependent variable t. So essentially what a is, it's the slope of the temperature function at x is equal to zero. Um, for the shooting problem, we do not know what that value of a is ahead of time. What we do know is that the value of temperature is 100 degrees at x is equal to zero and that t is equal to 10 degrees, in this case, at x is equal to 1. But we don't know the value of the, of the uh, slope of the temperature function at x is equal to 0. All right, so <clears throat> one way we can solve this is that we can use uh, the for loop type of approach, which you've done uh, in one of the earlier labs. And we take the first equation and discretize it, take the derivative and discretize it, such that uh, we have uh, the dt dx is equal to, uh, is represented as being yn plus one minus yn divided by delta x is equal to minus k over uh, Q over K, which if we expand it out just because Y of N plus 1 is equal to YN minus delta X Q over K. And uh, the other function is that the derivative of the temperature dt dx, <coughs> which is equal to Y, is just Tn plus 1 is equal to Tn plus delta x times yn. That's the approximation for the second equation. And as I said already, we can um, put this into a uh, MATLAB type of uh, script uh, file. And um, we can use a for loop to solve these equations in sequence such that we're able to solve for the temperature as well as the derivative of the temperature at every point within uh, the domain between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. Now the trouble is is that uh, one of the things we don't know here is we do not know what the derivative of the temperature is at x is equal to 0. We know the temperature at x is equal to 0. We know the temperature at x is equal to 1. We do not know, need, we do not know the temperature at x is equal to 0. And we do need to know that temperature at uh, x is equal to, or the derivative of the temperature at x is equal to 0 in order to uh, solve this equation. Because this equation requires that we know the derivative of the temperature with respect to x at x is equal to 0 to solve that equation. So the procedure is that we guess as to what that uh, value is at x is equal to 0. That is, we guess as to what y is at x is equal to 0. It can be a positive number, a negative number, or 0. We then solve the equations all the way through to get the value of t at x is equal to 1. If that value of x at, or value of t at x is equal to 1 is equal to the specified temperature, which is 10 degrees in this case, then we know we have the correct answer. If it's not, then we need to try a different value of the derivative of the temperature at x is equal to 0. So it's a trial and error procedure, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this to you with the uh, MATLAB um, program, where we'll be using the ODE45 rather than using a for loop. Here I'll uh, explain this a little bit further, but what we see here is that uh, for the example that we'll do, we'll use Q is equal to 40 
watts per cubic meter, L is equal to 0.85, K is equal to 0.25. We start with an initial guess for the slope that is the first derivative of T with respect to X. We assume that it's zero. That just basically means, you know, basically we've specified the temperature at X is equal to zero to be equal to 100 degrees. That's that right there. When I set dt dx is equal to zero, which is what this is, this is mm, dt dx is just uh, the value of y, of course. When I set dt dx equal to zero, that just gives me a horizontal slope because that the slope dt dx is the slope of the line. It's zero at that point. When I solve the equation all the way through, over in the other end, we end up with a temperature of 55 degrees. That temperature is not 10. It's supposed to be 10. Now, here I'm actually solving between 0.05 and 0.85, rather than between 0 and 1. It's just the way this particular example was set up that I'm showing you. Uh, in the MATLAB file, I'll be using x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1 for the, my domain length. All right, so obviously dt dx is equal to uh, 0 at x is equal to 0 is not the correct value of the slope of the line. So I need to try a different value of uh, y at x is equal to 0. Okay, so here I explain. Uh, with that previous result, the temperature is not 10, but it was actually 55 at uh, x is equal to at the other end of the domain. So, in a way, basically what we've done is we've overshot our answer. We didn't get the right answer. So that gives us the idea that perhaps the value of y zero um, might not uh, is not the value that uh, we use, but it actually should be something smaller than that. Uh, essentially what we have to do is we have to aim lower. That's why we call it kind of like a shooting process. We're aiming lower. So let's say that instead of zero I use the value one, minus 100. So now the slope of the line at x is equal to zero is minus 100. With that one I end up over here and you can see that I'm at about what minus 18 or or minus, uh, yeah, minus 25 or so, or minus 22 according to my uh, notes here. Which means that basically I've overshot, or I'm, I'm, I've undershot the, uh, an, uh, the answer, because I want it to be minus uh, I want it to be plus 10 at that point. So let's just keep trying different values of y of uh, 0 until I match the value uh, at uh, that point x is equal to L. I want to have it to be equal to 10 degrees. So after uh, several what I call educated guesses I end up with uh, a guess finally end up at minus 55 56.5 uh, and with that one at the other end of the domain, remember the other end of the domain is the x is equal to 0.85. The value is exactly equal to 10. And that's what I want. So in this problem, I was given the temperature at x is equal to 0, or actually 0.05 in this case. And uh, it was 100 degrees at the other end at x is equal to 0.85, I had a temperature of 10 degrees. And in order to solve the set of first order equations, I need to have the boundary condition that the boundary conditions that were shown here before. Um, we have a boundary condition at x equal to zero, and we have the derivative at, um, that is the boundary condition for um, equation 2 is 
the temperature to use a good 100 degrees and the boundary condition for equation one it's the derivative at x is equal to zero that was specified with that I'm able to solve the problem so uh, what we'll do now is we'll switch over to the MATLAB and you'll see the um, program written in the same way that the more general 2D or second order differential equation that we solved in the homework assignment. That was y double prime is equal to 3ty prime plus 2y is equal to 5t, I think it was what the equation was. Um, you can see what the format is. This is the main program for uh, MATLAB um, functions that I'm putting in here. And it, I'm using ODE45. The subroutine is called FUNC subscript uh, lower um, underscore shoot underscore heat transfer or heat trans underscore 2015 and that function routine is going to contain my equations that I'm trying to solve um, <clears throat> all this stuff about the first grid cell and all that is not uh, relevant uh, in this problem um, so you can ignore some of those notes that I've got on there. We're solving between x is equal to 0 and x is uh, equal to 1. The length of the domain here is given as being L is equal to 1.0. Um, the temperature on the left boundary is set equal to 100 degrees. The, temp the uh, first derivative of the temperature at x is equal to 0 is assumed to be equal to 10 as my first guess. So now I'm going to be solving um, for a variable, uh, an array, variable z, which contains both the temperature and the first derivative of the temperature at a bunch of points x. And of course MATLAB will decide which points x it'll do the calculation at. The arguments here are x between 0 and l, that's the domain, and then we have uh, the initial conditions. One would be the first derivative on the left boundary, that is at x is equal to zero. The first derivative is specified to be equal to 10. And the temperature on the left-hand boundary at x is equal to zero is equal to 100. The uh, trial variable that we're solving with is the y underscore left. And we'll try different values of that until we get the uh, correct answer. Let's look at the uh, function that we're calling. That's this one here. I've got my parameters for the heat intensity, 400 degrees, or I mean 400 watts per cubic meter. Uh, if it's positive, it's a source. If it's negative, it's a sink. Uh, K is the thermal conductivity. That would be uh, watts per meter uh, second. And just like in the other examples that we've done with ODE45, we solve for the change in the values of the variables. Well, y of 1 is the first derivative of the uh, temperature, and y of 2 is the temperature itself. So this, this first equation is, dy, d, is basically dt dx is equal to minus q over k, uh, or I should say it's uh, second derivative of temperature with respect to x um, equal to minus q over k and the second equation is just dt dx is equal to um, y of 1. So y of 1 is the derivative of the temperature, y of 2 is the temperature itself. Alright so <coughs> with that we can go in here with this initial guess for the temp, uh, for the first derivative at x is equal to zero, if I run this program, this is what I get. So at x is equal to zero, 
the temperature is 100 degrees on the at uh, the temperature is 100 degrees at x is equal to zero. I want it to be 10 on the right hand boundary. We can see we're way under shooting. My slope at x is equal to zero is way too small because on the right hand side the temperature is about minus uh, 680. I'm way off. I'm not getting the correct answer. So what that requires is that I specify uh, uh, you know, if I want to bring that, uh, I'll bring it back up here. If, um, if I want to bring that curve on the right-hand side up, or that point on the right-hand side up to 10 degrees, it's obvious that I need to raise or increase the slope at x is equal to zero. So we'll do that. I'll make this 100, and we we'll try again. As a result, we can see, okay, the temperature is still 100 at x is equal to 0. We can see that the slope has increased a little bit at x is equal to 0. It's actually dt dx is equal to 100 at x is equal to 0. The temperature on the right-hand side, instead of being minus 680, it's now minus 600. Let's uh, be more bold here, and I'll increase this to 500. Okay, so now it's still x is equal to 100 on the left boundary. Our slope at x is equal to 0 is increased to 500. And the temperature on the right-hand side is minus 200. So we're still a bit off, but we're, getting, we're going in the right direction. Uh, let's say that I make this 1,000. I know it's not that high, but I'm just going to see what happens here. Okay, so now... Uh, again, x is, uh, temperature is 100 at x is equal to 0. The slope is 1,000 degrees per whatever unit distance we're talking about. And the temperature on the right-hand side now is 300. So we're way overshooting. Let's try 710. All right, so 100 on the left-hand boundary. Looks like we might be okay on the right-hand boundary. We can check this. We don't know the exact temperature there, but if I expand this a bit, we'll be able to look at it. Um, look at that. 10 degrees at x equal to 1. Looks like I'm uh, pretty close. I guess the one, 710 because I kind of knew what the answer was going to be. I'll uh, bring that up here again. So that's the uh, result. We wanted to have a temperature of 100 degrees on the left boundary, um, 10 degrees on the right-hand side boundary, and um, all we had to do is to go through and try different values of the slope at the left-hand boundary at x is equal to zero to solve the two first order differential equation. If we are solving the second order equation as uh, directly as we did in the lab, then we don't have to be concerned about this because when we solve the second order equation, it immediately uses the temperature at x is equal to zero and x is equal to uh, one uh, in the solution. And we do not need to do this trial and error procedure that I've uh, pointed out to you. But what's nice here is that uh, we get to take advantage of the ODE45 um, function, which works for first order differential equations. It does not work for second order or third order differential equations. So we can have a second order or third order equation. We can reduce it to first order as we've shown you how to do in the class. And we can then apply the ODE45 to solving the uh, system of ordinary differential equations as a result.